Boys and girls, welcome back for a little more flip class. Today we're going to talk a bit about the cell and the environment in which it lives. Uh, the important thing to understand about the cell and the environment in which it lives is that this smart board is not aligned. As such, we want to kill it with poking it. Cells exist in what is called an aqueous environment. Aqueous from aqua, meaning it's a watery environment. So it's watery. Remember, inside the cell is water. Outside the cell is water. So that cytoplasm is water-based. Outside, though, is also water-based. And there's different sugars, salts, amino acids, etc., dissolved in there, mixed in there. And these molecules need to be moved sometimes in, sometimes out, sometimes around the interior of the cell. The cytoplasm, because of those things being in there, is slightly negative, and so that is one of the reasons why polar things can't do the polar things. So let's talk a little bit about uh, tonicity, which is a word for describing two solutions. So think of any two objects, think like maybe there's a big object, and maybe there's a small object. We'd say this one is bigger, this one is smaller. Uh, look at these two, we say these two are like roughly the same size. Same general idea, just instead of comparing the size of two objects, we're going to compare the concentrations. So you can have a solution that is isotonic, and in an isotonic solution, the concentration of dissolved particles are the same in both solutions. So if they both had a concentration of, I don't know, 3%, you would say this one is 3%, this one is 3%, these two solutions are isotonic. Now, it could be two different solutions. This could be 3% uh, sodium chloride, which is salt. And this could be 3% uh, C6H12O6, which is glucose. Even though that they're different substances, it's in the same concentration. So we say those two solutions are isotonic to each other. Same deal, hypertonic. In a hypertonic solution, we're talking about the solution that has a higher concentration. Again, doesn't matter what the particles are, just as long as one of them is higher, the higher one, instead of, you know, like the bigger one is bigger, the higher one is hypertonic, has a higher concentration of dissolved particles. And if the concentration is lower than, that other one we would say is hypotonic, having a lower concentration of dissolved particles. Hypo meaning below, hyper meaning above, iso meaning the same, and tonic referring to solution. Does that make sense to everyone so far? Hopefully you're nodding your head yes, because it's about to get a bit trickier. Generally, when we talk about these things, we're talking about the solution that these cells are floating in, the cellular environment. So we'd say the solution around the cell could be isotonic. Solution around the cell could be hypertonic, meaning it has a higher concentration of dissolved particles inside the cell. Or the solution around the cell could be hypotonic, having a lower concentration of molecules around the cell. So here's a picture uh, depicting that. Again, uh, don't focus so much on the amount of molecules. You'll see that there's maybe a different amount, but look at how they're spread out. Look at how the molecules are spread through space. That's really what concentration is a measure of the density of those molecules in the solution. So here's a pectoral representation. Isotonic, same concentration inside and outside. Hypotonic, there's a lower concentration outside compared to inside. And over here we have hypertonic. Again, there's a higher concentration outside as compared to inside. So there's a picture basically showing that same thing. It matters because of what happens to cells. So if you were to put uh, animal cells in these solutions, remember no cell wall here, in a hypotonic solution, Water will move in and out of the cell equally. This is obviously under the assumption that the molecules cannot pass through the membrane. So water will diffuse in and out by not osmosis, but we'll call it osmosis because osmosis. The isotonic solution, you'll have equal movement of water in and out because those concentrations are the same. In a hypertonic solution, there's a higher concentration of dissolved particles around the cell. See them? There they are. So in order to even out those two concentrations, the molecules want to move in, but they can't because the polar membrane's like, nah! And so instead, water will leave the cell by definitely not osmosis, but we will still call it osmosis. The water will leave the cell to lower this concentration, to dilute the solution that the cell is in until it reaches equilibrium. As a result, as you can see in picture, these cells will become very shrivelly and 
in a hypotonic solution, it's the opposite. The concentration around the cells is much lower than the concentration inside the cells. So water will enter the cell by definitely not osmosis, but we will still call it osmosis. Water will enter the cell by that osmosis thing to try and equal out the concentrations. And this can be dangerous because the cell will bloat and get larger. And unlike you at Thanksgiving where you just get a little uncomfortable, they could actually burst, they could lice, they could die. That's not good. So these are how animal cells react in those three different types of solutions. And here is how it's different though for an animal cell. You'll notice again, you put the uh, animal cell in that isotonic solution, water moves in and out as normal, the cell stays happy. Plant cells though, they're not very happy because plant cells want to be in this hypotonic solution. See the animal cell, hypotonic solution, hypo, below, cell swells like a hippo, could explode because the concentration is lower so water enters. However, plant cells, because they have that rigid cell wall on the outside, the water enters, it pushes, and it builds turgidity against the cell wall. Think like crisp, delicious celery when you just, mm, when you crunch on it and just, you know, that really crisp, that's turgid, that's turgidity. So the water enters, cell membrane pushes on the cell wall, that builds pressure, and that, boys and girls, is actually what causes plants to stand up straight. If your plants are in an isotonic solution compared to their cytoplasm, they start to wilt, they start to, you know, they're dehydrated. And then you water them, bam! Water enters the cell, they become turgid, they stand up straight again. Even worse would be the hypertonic solution for both animal cells because water would be leaving the cell to dilute that solution outside. Animal cells become shriveled, but plant cells become what is called plasmalized because the water is leaving the cell, the cell membrane really shrinks away from the cell wall. These plants, uh, they're gonna wilt, they're probably gonna die just like these cells are gonna die. And that, boys and girls, is why the cell environment, why those comparative words matter. Hopefully all of that makes sense. We'll talk more about it in class the following day. Thanks for watching.